To welcome to this week's video, I am happy to introduce Tim and Sam. Hey, I'm Sam Boring. Guys, I'm Tim Boring. They have Wellhouse Juicery. So you guys have a really good history in terms of entrepreneur mindset. A lot of people don't really know what that means or what's a little bit more of the background story and how y'all view the entrepreneurship mindset. A lot of ideas, <laughs> yeah. a lot of dreaming, and we're not any, anywhere close to what we originally thought we would be into to what we're into now. Yeah, and it's a lot of changes because everything in real life, it's not as linear as what it is in your mind. And as you said, you guys have not just run this new juice company, but y'all have also had experience in both a little bit of brewing, a little bit of housing development, and just kind of general things like that. So what's going on with the whole well house juice? Because I know that that whole brand identity has a little bit back into the roots of this whole entrepreneurship mindset. So we started with Well House, the Well House concept, um, again, with the idea that one day we would have a business, whatever that looked like. And it started really with flipping homes. Um, so we established Well House Homes, and that's what he was good at. Um, so that's what we poured our hearts and souls and money into. And he had a lot of dreams along the way of owning a business from anywhere from a brewery to um, the grocer, the health, healthy grocery. Um, and so then we eventually landed at Juice, but it definitely wasn't it wasn't where we started by any means. So it seems like y'all didn't really approach entrepreneurship from I want to do this thing. You approached it from I want to be in this market. And so what kind of got y'all into that more of the health space in general versus focusing in on that one individual product that's gonna make you successful. And how has that flexibility improved or hindered the way that y'all have seen your business evolve over time? Yeah, I think uh, for me, um, I was in pharmaceutical research for 32 years, so I was ready to get out from behind a desk. We've always been kind of a fitness um, some type, usually from a physical standpoint, going working out and stuff. And then we started focusing more on our health you know what we're putting in our bodies and stuff like that and that's kind of drew us more and more into the juice world or just looking for uh, natural ways to get you know more nutrients in our body early. Uh, we started with what we knew how to do which were to use our hands flip homes we've never been scared of the hard work and that grew into a passion of having our own business seeing the end result chasing more and more after bigger and bigger dreams because a finances became available with doing what we were what we were good at doing um, and then yeah it's kind of led us to led us to this which we never really had imagined initially so so i gotta say i'm glad you guys did everything y'all push across the counter it's great because a lot of people they'll go out and they'll just go straight for the buck and they don't understand that community is really a way that you take a business you can change it into something that's that's not just gonna be here for a short term. The thing I'm really interested in is what is the key point and the main decider that took you from, all right, we're building a lot of houses, this is the way we wanna go, into more of a, a retail kind of food provider. What was that one instance? Was it a thought? Was it just this flip of the switch moment where you're like, okay, I really wanna do this now? I would say it'd be the housing market boom and the rising cost of homes. Uh, it was hard to find a home to be able to redo and to be able to flip for what people were asking. And that's when we uh, looked into the juicing aspect, um, you know, because at the same time COVID come around and we just felt like there was a lot of people out there searching for, you know, ways to get healthy because a lot of people were getting sick from comorbidities and stuff like that. So we wanted to look at it from a preventative measure more so than waiting until you get sick. And so with a big aspect, kind of more into the pharmaceutical industry, did that lead into a benefit or an advantage when y'all were building your juices out? Because a lot of the times pharmaceutical is more of like whack-a-mole where you're kind of treating the symptoms as they come. Did the pharmaceutical industry set y'all up in a way that gave y'all an advantage in seeing these issues before they even arise and being able to come up with different ways to treat those? Definitely. We felt as though we could offer something simple. In getting back to the basics, which we were actually journeying on ourselves, everything from what we were using you know, on our countertops to clean our homes with, what I was using on my skin, what we were actually ingesting, that all mattered. Um, and so in doing that and feeling better and really feeling empowered throughout COVID, which was very different than a lot of people did. And a lot of people would come to us and ask, what do you, what do you do? You know, what's that drink you drink every morning? And, and what is it that keeps you guys so healthy? And, and the right answer, it wasn't fitness anymore, which was our answer for so long before. Um, and so we were really seeking out different 
different solutions. Uh, we actually did a liver and gallbladder cleanse, which was pretty intense, and followed by a juice cleanse, which we had never juiced before. So we were not avid juicers previously. We had done some dabbling with celery juice. Um, we liked that first thing in the morning just to set the tone for our day and saw a lot of benefit from that. But really after that 48 hour juice cleanse, following the liver gallbladder cleanse, and what it did to lift our brain fog and just made us feel energetic um, and again, empowered. We wanted to share that with other people. And so that all started just from y'all setting up things in your own house and just experimenting and slowly building something that y'all saw results with personally. How did you transition from having it in your house and turning it into what it is now as a whole structured business with all the different aspects and all the different moving parts. Well, in the beginning, I just wanted to go big all the way. <laughs> and, Par for she, course. Yeah. and she kind of slowed me down. So we did, um, we started kind of small and bought a small juicer, started experimenting with that in the home. Um, and then uh, I did talk her into, you know, going big, a little big and uh, buying a big juicer just to put that out there and, and start towards that journey. Yeah, we actually have some good videos of that. Is that the same guy in action or did you guys actually step up and upgrade it once again? We actually have a smaller okay. one at home um, that we use. So we started with like a centrifugal juicer and then we moved up to a cold press, two press chamber juice, um, which we still have at home and we do a lot of our recipe building on. What is the process that you guys go through to keep everything at such high quality? Because everything that y'all are pushing out is great. So what does it take to get from just straight up fresh organic grown fruit and turn it into a product that is an amazing freshly grown organic fresh fresh juice? We have had a lot of help along the way. We were not afraid to admit we didn't know the answers um, because we were very new juicers. And again, the whole food and bev and thinking of it in terms of retail kind of blew our minds because that's not that's not our comfort zone by any means. So we hired a consultant. Um, we work with her a lot in the beginning um, from a business standpoint as well as we were able to get some of her references for um, different recipes, like super basic recipes on where to start. So we would take those recipes and we'd try them and if we didn't really like them, we'd tweak them a bit. We got to the point where we were, you know, adding different you know, ginger or turmeric um, based on what it was going to support, inflammation or, or things that we had heard, we knew people were, were dealing with. Um, and so really it's just been a lot of trial and error. Um, and as far as the produce goes, so it takes about a pound and a half to two pounds of produce to create a 16 ounce juice, cold pressed juice. So just that thought alone of what we're absorbing, you know, what we're digesting and then quickly absorbing because there's no fiber in it um, was mind blowing to us. Um, it was always, quality has always been a very, very important, well, the last five years I'd say, very important um, component of our health journey. And so we just have continued that. In general, we've got the whole business and how you guys got here. What does the process look like on a day-to-day -day basis and what's required of y'all and what does it take to run a business like this? Because y'all said to me in the beginning that y'all are in here every day of the week now. And it's turned into something that was, you know, just a hobby in kind of in your home that you're doing for your own health to now you've got daily people coming in needing this stuff who you can't miss a beat. And you've got certain quantities that as soon as you guys are coming in here, if you can't get it out, then they don't have their juice. So what does the process look like and how have y'all streamlined it in order to figure out the best way to turn that organic, fresh material into your final product? Yeah, well, I think that's that, that's still an ongoing thing for us <laughs> right now. We're still trying to figure out our demand. Um, it seems like we'll come in and, and look at the refrigerator and see what's left and it's like, Oh wow, okay, we got to juice again tomorrow. So um, that's happened quite often lately, so it's a great thing to have. Um, but yeah, a lot of it goes into you know the, the ordering and we only get orders on certain days. So if it falls on a day that we can't get orders, you know, it, it hurts us. So we try to stock up. Um, using a shared kitchen right now has really limited us a little bit just from uh, stock of produce to times we can get in here. Um, so that's something that's hampered us a little bit, but um, you know, as far as washing each and every bit of produce that goes in these juices, it takes a lot of time. Um, yeah, and a lot of people don't realize just how much time it does take, you know? Because I mean, we were back there and the whole time y'all were pressing and bottling and juicing at the same time, everything was being washed the whole time. It was pretty crazy. So yeah. We can, yeah, we can uh, grind and press out 80 juices in about two hours and we sell about 
60 to 70 right now a day. Um, so it's all we have to keep up, uh, which is a wonderful, wonderful problem. So we're in, we're juicing now five days a week. Um, I'd say about 15 hours total. And that, of course, is just the actual juicing. That's not the ordering and the social media aspects and all the other business components that go into it. Um, but yeah, we and we have a system between the two of us where we would love to make it more people <laughs> because it's just we're really kind of tapped now and we work as fast as we possibly can. Um, we both kind of have our, our duties. So Tim is great at washing every bit of produce that goes into the juices. Because she won't. <laughs> <laughs> and the dishes after we're all done. Um, and I tend to chop and weigh. Um, I get all the bottles prepped, the, li the lids labeled, um, the bottles labeled, and we just kind of have a rotation where he's washing and I'm usually bottling and then um, I'm weighing and then he's washing and then he's grinding and pressing and then yeah so it's just We've got a flow for sure. Yeah, we yeah. we work well together. So, where do you guys see yourselves going in the next, you know, six months, the next years or so? What is your aspiration and what are your kind of more long-term goals? Life happens, but it's always cool to see uh, where do people think their company's going and what does the community have that's being built to look forward to? Yeah, I think uh, right now we're we are really searching for our own place, brick and mortar, um, just because we're so limited on time here. And we really feel um, people have really responded great to the juices. Um, we've seen, we have quite a few testimonies of just what people are feeling and how they're feeling after the juices, um, from arthritis to migraines to just all kinds of things. And that's, that's what really drives us, honestly, is that feedback, those testimonies. So, you know, if we're, being able to provide that at this capacity, we'd like to, you know, if we can reach more people and, and uh, be able to produce even more juice and, and a few more options. Um, we have we have a business plan that has a few more uh, menu items, quite a few, um, that we'd like to, you know, get out there too. And, and right now we're just kind of tied um, to just juicing here. So yeah, we're actively looking to uh, expand. So our business plan and where we started was brick and mortar. We were adamant, we went around town, we looked at places, we quoted out build outs. I mean, we were, that's where he wanted to go big. So we were gonna start big <laughs> yes. and life happened and we got kind of redirected um, and we were blessed with the opportunity to have the shared kitchen and Leanne reached out to start to grow more organically to make sure A, Beaufort was actually going to even enjoy juice because there's nothing like it in the area um, and then B to make sure that this is the business model that we had envisioned it um, to be and so the response has been great because we've been really only in it for the last five months um, and we have grown substantially and are in a position now to, to go look at our own place so it's really exciting. Yeah we've got three different guys laying out here and we've got an amazing range of colors. Is there any kind of color inherent properties that if I'm looking at a juice on the shelf, you're going to be like, yeah, well, this green is going to be good for X, Y, and Z. This carrot is going to be good for X, Y, and Z. That's why it's orange. Is there, is there a certain like mix that's going to be unique in terms of what, what's going on with these guys or is it? Yeah. So we do offer um, the primary benefits. It's hard to say what the benefits are of all of them, um, but the primary benefits listed at the bottom. And I always say it usually will support the organ or the whatever's on your body that's similar color. So like green's always digestion. Um, beet is always heart, because it's red. Um, carrot, obviously, is more of skin health. Um, but just so many phytonutrients that you get in minerals and vi minerals, vitamin vitamins, and, and phytonutrients um, that these guys give you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, really, it's a broad range. And we have, so we have anything from a all fruit juice to an all vegetable juice. So we call our all vegetable juices our strong juices, and then our sweeter veg or our sweeter fruit juices, um, our, our sweet beets or our, our sweet greens. So. If I'm coming in and I'm gonna be looking at the shelf and there's something I've, I've never seen before and I see all these different colors and all these different juices, What's the number one go-to that you'd probably rank above all else that you'd say, this one's gonna give you the most broad benefits if I don't see any issues right now as a person? Rise Up. Yeah, yeah. Rise Up, it has the most um, the most broad range of benefits for sure. So you, you have cayenne pepper, which is, supports metabolism. You've got local honey for allergies, um, ginger, turmeric, and lemon, which is wonderful for inflammation and 
you know, just immunity. Apple cider vinegar for digestion. So you really have a one-stop shop here. Carrot, um, you know, for eyes and skin health. So I would say this is probably the most preventative. Um, really, I always say, you can't go wrong with any of them. Each have kind of their niche. Um, and it, it's always safe too to do a green juice um, because a green juice is just, a, especially the stronger the green, the better. If you can, if you like that kind of thing, um, just because you're going to get more from the dark leafy greens than you do from the fruits. And if people want to really follow along with the journey, where should they kind of stay tuned in order to really connect and learn more about the brand? I would say Instagram is definitely our number one uh, platform that we use to communicate different things. Um, we do have a website, um, wellhousejuice.com, which we are working on building up and doing more blogs. And one of our pillars um, that we really stand behind is educating and trying to educate in a very simple way. Links are going to be in the description. Check it out. They've got tons of different content that they're looking to produce and these are really great guys. They've got a great product and they're gonna be going places in the near future and you're gonna to wanna to see that progression. It's gonna be something that's gonna blow you away. So feel free to go check them out.